This tutorial is for total beginners who are still struggling with the walking actions for all characters. Even if you've been watching my tutorials about the walking cycle and you're still having troubles getting those characters to walk from point A to point B and it's still a struggle for you, well, you don't have to worry about it anymore because in this video, I'm going to make it as easy as possible and I'll show you the logic behind working with those characters to make them walk from point A to point B smoothly. So make sure to watch this video until the end if you really want to master the walking action for all characters. I'm going to be demonstrating this for the standard 3D characters and you can apply the same logic on all other characters. And I'll also demonstrate how you can use the 3D character creators because these guys can spin around in 360 mode. So you will learn about their character view animation. And now let's dive into it and show you how you can start working with characters to make them walk smoothly from one position to another. This is one of the backgrounds available in the studio. You're free to work with any background you like, but I have this from the studio and it's called Flowers. So I'm gonna go into my characters list and then I'm going to open up the category list and choose the 3D characters. Again, once you learn how to do this, you can apply the same strategy for all different characters like the 2D ones, even the doodle characters. So let me grab one of those characters and then I'm going to start with the Memoji guy, for example. Now, as you can see, as soon as I, I grab a character onto the canvas, their default action is waving. And same applies to all other characters that are under the 3D or the 2D, even their, the Doodle characters. They're always going to show you either waving or idle, but in most cases, it's going to be waving. And so if you want to have this character walk from the left side to the right side, you can change the action. But if you want them to start with waving and saying hi at the beginning, that's totally up to you. But one thing you need to know is that there's a difference between get getting characters to walk from the left side outside the scene and from the left side inside your scene. I'm going to show you both techniques so you can learn the difference and make it easy for you. So I'm gonna start with the first example by having the character walk from the left side where he's at onto the right side of our scene. So I'm gonna keep the waving action as our first one. That's totally okay. Now I'm gonna add his second action. So I'll go to my action list under settings on the right panel and then click on add new to add another action. Then I'm gonna choose walking. Now, once I have that set and I need move, to move my plate forward in time, you're going to notice that the character is walking in the wrong direction. So all we got to do is simply select our character and then we're going to click on the flip icon above the character to flip the character and make sure he's walking in the right direction. And then, as you can see, the beginning of the action, so this is what you need to understand about all the walking actions for all characters, is that... Regardless of the action, it doesn't matter whether it is waving, walking, or whatever, they always have a starting animation and an ending animation. The starting animation of each action is where they're posing and looking at the camera, and then they can start walking, and at the end of the action, they'll turn back and look at the camera. Same thing goes for the waving action. So he starts by crossing his hands, and looking at the camera, then I, once I start moving or advancing my playhead forward in time, I will see my character picking up his hand and waving, and then finally go back into this idle action at the end to look at the camera. The reason for that is because the creators behind Create Studio, they did this they, so that you can have a smooth transition between actions. Now, let me show you how to get this character to walk from one position to another. The first thing you want to do is when you notice the character standing like this, you gotta advance your playhead forward in time just to see the spot where he's about to move his legs. That's the right spot where you can add your keyframes. And at that point, we're going to select our character. Then we're going to click on add animation above the timeline. And we're going to choose position. And as far as easing, there's a, always a rule where we have to use linear for both in and out. The reason for that is because linear is the smoothest easing effect when it comes to a character's walking action. And linear is also chosen because it has a 
constant speed from start to finish that's how we keep our characters smooth when they're walking from point a to point b once you're done you're going to have your two keyframes ready on the character's track what you want to do next before adjusting your second keyframe is simply advance your playhead forward in time until you spot where he makes his last step on the ground just like this so right before he turns back to the screen we're going to make sure that our playhead is on that spot and simply drag our second keyframe to where our playhead is at next we want to make sure our second keyframe is selected then we're going to hold the shift key and drag our character all the way to the right side of our scene like this and then when we go back and then press play there you go he starts waving and then he would start to move you know from one side to another i see that he was walking a little bit faster so if you want to make this smoother uh, you're going to need to extend the walking action a little bit more to give him time so that he can walk smoothly and better than this so i'm going to extend the action to nine seconds and then to adjust the keyframes i'm going to advance my playhead forward in time same process until we spot where the character is finishing the walking action and before he turns back to the camera that's where we're going to drag our second keyframe to where our playhead is at right there we go back from the very beginning of the walking action press play and there you go now he is walking slower and smoothly from one place to another and then he turns back to the camera so that was the first example the second example is to show you where the character is going to start walking from the left side but outside the scene so in this case i'm going to use the same character but i'm going to go into our settings and delete the waving action so he can begin walking right from the very beginning and as you can see like i said the starting animation of this character is looking at the camera and since he's going to be walking from the left side outside the screen he we don't need that starting animation so all we're going to do is simply right click the walking button on the character's track to disable the starting animation this way we guarantee that the character is going to start walking right from the very beginning of the track and then all we got to do is simply adjust the keyframes on the character's layer let me just remove the, the existing keyframes and then we can start from scratch so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select my character again and then i'm going to click on add animation above the timeline easing is going to be linear properties is going to be position and then now i have my two keyframes ready now i'm going to need to select my second keyframe you might just drag them a little bit to the right just at least one frame so you're able to select or click the first keyframe and then you can drag your character to the left side outside the scene like this next before adjusting your second keyframe now like i said we got to move our or advance our playhead forward in time right at the spot before he turns back to the camera like this right here and simply drag the second keyframe to where our playhead is at and drag my character onto the right side of my scene and then go back to the very beginning press play and there you go now we have our character walking from point a to point b so he started from the left side outside our scene so it was important for us to delete the starting animation and keep the ending animation why because once he finishes walking he's going to look back at the camera of course you're going to need to add other actions so you can click and add new for example and say happy right so once he does that when once he finishes walking right there he's going to turn back and then he's going to show happiness right there so this is how you can have a smooth transition between actions and that's basically how these characters are set up in create studio 3. now let's move on to the second demonstration i'm going to show you how to work with the 3d character creator so i'm going to remove this guy and remove the background as well then we can start from scratch by grabbing a suitable background for this guy so let's say i have my space background i'm using this guy because we have some distance that we can have our character uh, or space that we can have our character walk from one point a to point b and turn around and do a lot of stuff in here now all i'm going to do is i'm going to extend the background in the timeline um, all the way to about you know 15 seconds or so maybe more um, for now let's do 20 actually and then we're going to go to our 3d character creators 
Again, the difference between those characters and the other characters is that these guys are different and are able to rotate or spin around in 360 mode. That's what makes these characters stand out from other characters inside the software. So I'm gonna start by grabbing Tom into my scene right here. And one thing you need to know about these characters is that the 3D creator characters will always have an idle action as their default action. And so before you start adjusting your actions for this character, you gotta decide or determine what sort of actions will your character have for this scene. So we're gonna need to have a couple or few actions for this character it's important to know that they always have a starting animation and an ending animation for all actions even 3d creators yes even 3d creators have a starting and an ending animation or action for all their action lists why because they wanted to keep that smooth to transition from one action to another instead of just jumping on to another action and make your characters look weird. So let's just decide on what we wanna do in this case. This guy is gonna start waving. So I'm gonna go to actions. I'll click on action one and change that from idle to wave. So I'll choose that right here. Then I need to have him walk at a different place. So let's have him walk over there, like back there, maybe behind a car or something. So I'm gonna click on uh, add new to add another action. Then I'm gonna choose walking, and then I will add another action. We can do selfie right there, and then we can add another action and choose walking. So we can have them um, uh, go back or come back again closer to the scene. Then we're gonna have him go onto the right side of the car. So we're gonna add another action in between. Maybe we can do idle if we want to, or any other action, let's say, waving again then i'm going to add another action then i'll do walking right there the goal of this tutorial is to show you or teach you the methodology of using the walking actions for all characters so you can master their walking action and not really have any troubles after watching this tutorial so as you can see the first action of the character is wave so he's going to start by looking at the camera and then he's going to pick up his hand start waving and then he will start walking and then do take a selfie over there and then make another walking action and then wave and then continue to walk again so here's where we start making adjustments and i want you to pay attention to this part because working with those characters is a little bit tricky adjusting their character view animation. So if you want to master their walking action, please pay attention to the details of this tutorial so you can learn how to do this. And most importantly is to keep practicing of all times until you feel confident and comfortable using the characters inside the software and making them walk from one, uh, one point to another smoothly without any problem. Now, here's what's gonna happen. The beginning of the action is by standing or looking at the camera. Then he's going to start turning to the left and begin to walk. So here's what we want to do. At this, at this spot, we're gonna to need to make the character look in the right angle and have him walk back there behind a car. So all we're going to do is have our playhead at the very beginning of the walking action where the little square is, that's basically the starting of the walking action select our character click and add animation and we're going to use character view easing is going to be linear for both in and out and then now i have my two keyframes ready on the character's track all i'm going to do is i'm going to select my second keyframe and this is basically the beginning of the walking action but before he does that we're going to need to rotate the character in the right angle right because the character view animation that we just used is responsible for spinning characters in 360 mode. And now I have my, my keyframe selected. I'm gonna click on the rotate icon above the character. Then I'm going to rotate my character to look in the right angle so that he can walk kind of behind the, the car over there. And then when done, we're gonna need to extend the walking action because he's gonna be walking quite a distance from where he's at to where he's gonna end up walking behind the car. So I'm gonna extend the walking action a little bit more in the timeline to about 11 seconds or so. And if I need to make adjust adjustments later on, I can certainly do that. But where my playhead is at on the middle of the second keyframe of my character view animation, I'm going to select my character, click and add animation. And his easing is going to be linear for both in and out. Like I said, this is a rule. Going back to the properties tab, we're going to choose position and scale. Why scale? Because character perspective 
we want to bear that in mind while he's walking farther out in the scene now we have our keyframes ready before adjusting the second keyframe we're going to advance our second uh, our playhead forward in time until we spot where he makes his little final step right before he turns again which is right there and then simply drag the second keyframe to where our playhead is at right there make sure it is also centered and selected and then we can simply uh, make our character a little smaller in size and grab them over there kind of behind a car right there here you go like this and then go back and then watch this part and see how it looks like so let's just play see what it looks like waving and then he's going to turn and then begin to walk from where he's at to farther out in the scene behind the car then he's going to rotate and take a selfie and then with the second walking action here's what we want to do at the very beginning of it same thing so he's going to come closer to the scene so he's going to be ending walking right at this spot so here's what we're going to do we're going to need to extend the walking action further down in the timeline like that to about 22 seconds or so and then we will start using our keyframes so as you can see the starting of the walking action is he rotates or turns to a different angle so we're going to have to have our playhead on the middle of the walking action click and add animation easing is going to be linear properties would be character view to take care of the spinning part next we're going to select the second keyframe click and rotate above the character make sure he is in the right angle like this and then he should be ready to walk in the right angle next we have to have our playhead on the middle of that second keyframe simply click on add animation position and scale easing is going to be linear for both in and out and before adjusting our second keyframe we know what to do we're going to advance our playhead forward in time and spot the placement before he makes a turn right so once he makes his final step right here is where we're going to drag our second keyframe to where our playhead is at and make sure this is selected then we can scale up tom right here and then we can grab him right there onto this uh, part of the scene let's just go back and watch this area and take a look there you go and then he begins to walk over there looks nice and easy and everything looking good so far and then what we're going to need to do is simply have our playhead at the very beginning of this walking action right here then we are going to start by adding some keyframes so we're going to click on add animation above the timeline we're going to use a uh, character view easing is going to be linear for both in and out next we're going to select our second keyframe click and rotate and then rotate the character in the right angle like that and then he's ready to begin walking so we're going to need to extend the walking action for this one as well to give him his time so that he can walk quite a distance from where he's at back there on the right side of the scene next we have to have our playhead on the middle of the second keyframe right here and then simply click on add animation we're going to use easing as linear properties is going to be position and scale and before adjusting our second keyframe we're going to advance our playhead forward in time just to spot where he makes his final step right there and then simply drag our second keyframe to where our playhead is at right here make sure it is selected then we're going to scale down tom and make him go over there right here scale him living down like this make sure he is in the right proportionate just like that right here and then let's go back and take a look at that part all right there you go now he's beginning to walk from where he's at to the spot where i have him going to now you can see the walking action is a little bit slow so we can simply uh shorten the walking action a little bit more make sure your keyframe is directed to the left side so you don't lose it and then adjust the length of your walking action and again we're gonna have to make adjustments to the walking action simply by advancing our play at forward in time and spotting where he is about to turn making his final step right there drag our second keyframe to where our playhead is at and let's go back and take a look at that and there you go now he's walking even faster and looks smoother and he's definitely okay so yeah this is how you can work with characters walking actions in all aspects regardless of what type they are 3d creators or even standard 3d characters or doodle characters and even 2d characters you will now have a better idea and understanding the logic behind working with those characters and the trouble with their walking action i hope you found this helpful thank you so much for watching and i'll see you on the next one Later.